The Apple Magic Trackpad originally didn't really make much sense to me. I didn't understand why would you want a wireless trackpad when you're using your computer on a desk. Doesn't it make more sense to just use a wireless mouse? But in this video, we're going to talk about some of the benefits of using an Apple Magic Trackpad and also when you might just want to stick with buying a standard Bluetooth mouse. Apple's Magic Trackpad uses Bluetooth and allows you to use all the great features that their built-in laptop trackpads have whenever you're plugged into a monitor and without having your computer right in front of you. It's also a great option if you're using a Mac Studio or a Mac Mini and if you want to have that more laptop-like experience. The Apple Magic Trackpad is just one gigantic trackpad that you can scroll on, use gestures, and just point and click away with ease. The more you get used to using Apple's built-in laptop trackpads, the more you realize just how nice they are, especially when you compare them to the trackpads of older computers. There's honestly a ton of precision and gestures that can be used with the trackpad, and that's part of why using a wireless trackpad may make sense for your desktop setup. You can click either with a physical click or you can just tap on the trackpad to click. You can do secondary or right click by just putting two fingers on the trackpad or by clicking with two fingers. You can also set up the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner to use right click or secondary click as Apple calls it on the wireless trackpad. If you wanna go between apps that are full screen, you can set it up to either use three or four finger swipe and you just swipe between your different desktop views that you have to quickly change from one app to the next. You can also show your desktop, show all your apps, activate mission control, all with different gestures too. I think the best thing about Apple's trackpad is just how effortless using it is. You can scroll and get through web pages and documents with ease, and just moving the pointer is very precise on this without having to use a ton of motion like you may have to on a mouse. When I'm using a laptop trackpad, I really like using the right click in the bottom right corner of it, but I did find with the Apple Magic trackpad that's wireless, the surface is just so big that it's hard to do the right click in the bottom right corner and I found myself preferring the two finger tap or the two finger click to use right click instead of using the bottom right corner. Apple also has their force touch sensitivity built straight in so you can do a firmer press to activate some secondary functions on different things on Mac OS. Apple also gives you three different levels of click sensitivity and they give you a silent click as well. So it's really interesting how they're able to give that feel of a click without it really being a true physical click on this mouse. One of the biggest pros and cons of the Magic Trackpad is its size. It's honestly really easy to use and it's great that you have such a big surface to work with, but it also makes your trackpad be kind of far away from your keyboard. And if you wanna use the right click in the bottom right corner, it can be really unnatural to reach from the middle of the trackpad all the way to the corner. So using the two finger tap or click is a much better option for secondary click when you're using the trackpad. It's also interesting to compare using this to a laptop trackpad. The laptop trackpad is directly below the keyboard and most people put the wireless trackpad beside their keyboard. So using the setup that way on a desktop is a little different because on a laptop, you can kind of type and then use your thumb to scroll. And if you put your keyboard farther away from your arms on a desktop surface, sometimes the positioning can be a little bit weird. So that leads me to probably the biggest con of the Magic Trackpad is ergonomics just aren't really there with the trackpad. You're kind of supposed to hover your wrist when you use this and it can make your arm feel a little bit stiff to hover your wrist, but then if you put your wrist down on your desktop surface, then you can also get a little bit choked up on the trackpad too, and it can give you some hand cramps as well. So using the Magic Trackpad does not give the greatest ergonomic experience, and I find myself often shifting my positioning with the trackpad. All that to say the experience of using the trackpad is amazing. It's super precise, and it makes doing productivity work really easy. But I find for doing graphic design, photo editing, video editing, I still prefer using the Logitech MX Master and even the Apple Magic Mouse to this as it just gives me a little bit more of that tactile feel than what you get with the Magic Trackpad. I've also decided that using a Magic Trackpad is kind of an acquired taste. Some people absolutely love it and then I talk to other people and they hate the wireless trackpad and they don't understand the purpose of it. So if you do decide to get one and use it, you're not gonna fall in love with it overnight. It's probably gonna take you a little bit of time to get it integrated into your desktop setup. And it also could depend on what your seat height and your desk height is as well. Cause I found sometimes I need to raise my seat a little bit higher than I would use with a mouse to get the better ergonomic position. 
but even so, I find myself wanting to switch back to a wireless mouse after a while, depending on the computer tasks that I'm doing. I've also been able to improve on the experience of using the wireless trackpad by using a wrist rest underneath my wrist, just to give a little bit of extra cushion and to help me keep my wrist in a more natural position while using it. You might want to try that out if you have one of these. The Magic Trackpad is compatible with all of Apple's different computers as well as the iPad, and they give you a lightning to USB-C cable in the box to charge it and to pair it. The battery lasts for a long time, and you can even use the wireless trackpad while it's plugged in, unlike the Magic Mouse. It is really annoying to pair the Magic Trackpad with both an iPad and a computer. To pair the Magic Trackpad with your computer, you just plug the lightning to USB cable into your Mac, and then it's paired immediately. And it's really easy to change between one computer to the next just by plugging the cable in, although you do have to have the cable lying around. But to pair it with an iPad, you actually have to shut the Magic Trackpad off, and then on, and then go to the Bluetooth settings on your iPad, and then the Magic Trackpad will appear as long as you don't allow it to pair to your computer again. Now where it gets annoying is if you want to go back from the iPad to the computer, you have to get the lightning cable out again. And then if you want to go back from using the computer to an iPad that it's previously been paired with over Bluetooth, you can't just shut the Magic Trackpad off and on. You actually have to shut it off and on and go to the device settings on the iPad, unpair it from Bluetooth, and then it'll be available to be repaired again. So it's really not a great multi-device wireless trackpad, unfortunately. So to tie it all together, the Magic Trackpad is a really enjoyable experience to use, especially if you love your MacBook Pro's trackpad and you want that same experience when you're using it plugged into an external monitor and you want to use your computer in clamshell mode or not have your laptop right in front of you. The ergonomic performance is definitely not what I would like it to be, especially when you compare it to using something like the Logitech MX Master 3S where you just have really good wrist positioning but it is still really enjoyable to use, and it's just kind of a seamless experience when you're going from laptop mode to desktop mode. It feels very natural and familiar to Mac users who are used to using gestures and their built-in laptop trackpad. You should consider buying one if you're a trackpad fanboy, but you might stay away from it if you do a little bit more precise work and if you're really used to a mouse. Now, one thing that has been kind of fun to use is to use this side by side with another mouse like the Magic Mouse or the MX Master 3S, because then you kind of get the best of both worlds. You have the gestures available on the Magic Trackpad, and you have the precise control of the Logitech MX Master 3S, but this does take up more desktop space, and you might find it a little bit unnecessary. One nice thing about this, though, is it can change your wrist positioning and your hand positioning up, which can lead to better ergonomics in the long run because you're not doing the same exact position and repetitive motion with your hand and wrist when you use both the Magic Trackpad and a mouse. The Magic Trackpad definitely isn't for everyone, but overall, it's a great seamless experience if you're a fan of the trackpads that Apple has built into all of their different laptops, and you want a seamless experience going from laptop to desktop mode. I have links that you can buy the Magic Trackpad in the description below. It's available in both black and white, and it is a little bit more expensive than the Magic Mouse, but again, it's just a different experience from using the Magic Mouse. If you have any other questions about the Magic Trackpad or if you think I missed anything, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Also, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and be sure to check out my other videos for more computer hardware accessory reviews.